Hey my friend, it's Will here over at Pips and Gains and welcome back to another weekly trading review. In today's video we're just going to be going over my trading setups from last week. We're going to analyse each setup that triggered. We're going to look at the reasons why they worked and then the reasons why they didn't work. Just to show you my mindset and that my thought process when I'm coming up with trade, trading ideas and how I review my trades at the end of each trading week. Hopefully that this video will be able to benefit you and help you become a more profitable and better trader. So before we get into the video, if you are new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed yet, simply hit the subscribe button now, hit the thumbs up, show your support for the channel so I can keep on creating content like this, share my near 15 years experience in the FX markets. So let's get into the video. First off, we're going to have a, I'm just going to, if you are new to my channel and, uh, <clears throat> I've never seen my stuff before. The way I trade the markets on a weekly basis is a weekly swing basis is that I come up on a Sunday or Saturday or Sunday, I come up with anywhere from 15 to 20 trading ideas across. I'll analyze all the 28 uh, main currency pairs. I'll come up with 20, 15 to 20 trade ideas across all those pairs. And I will put them into a spreadsheet like this and then I'll have a entry price, a stop loss, a take profit, a break even price. And we'll go through each one of these in a minute. Take profit and stop loss should be uh, very, very uh, easy to understand. Break even is basically, I did do a previous video last week on it. You can watch that here on the break even. is basically once, my, once a position has triggered and it goes a certain uh, way in my favor, I will then close 50% of the position and move my stop loss to the entry price. We'll only get a little bit of my chaga tea. <clears throat> the reason behind that is you'll see in this video because it is very, very beneficial. So again, I trade in a basket of trade ideas each week. They go in pending orders. There is two ways to trade. Uh, I can trade these ideas. One is just set and forget, enter as pending orders. The other is using my TRFX indicator for trading view, which I'll show you how to access at the end of this video, absolutely free. Just basically to set alerts at the entry levels and then look for signals on either of any, any time frame above the four hour chart, uh, set alerts on trading view, <clears throat> and then you can be alerted at these levels or above those above or below these levels when a signal happens. Now, the reason why I like trading in a basket of currencies is because I'm able to spread my risk across all positions. Okay, instead of just having two or three ideas and trading maybe 2% per trade, I will have all these positions and I'll risk in, in a I'll spread my risk over a basket of currencies, meaning that I'll maybe three, four percent of my account will be risk across all these positions. Okay, so I'm able to <clears throat> a lot of times hedge winners against losers and a lot of times it is more pro profitable. This is why I'm able to basically uh, generate hundreds of pips uh, each week uh, on a regular consistent basis. So let's have a look at the setups. So these are the setups that happened this week. Uh, we're, all we're going to look at is the ones that triggered. We can look here that this is from the trading view group or the Telegram group. Okay, I regularly update uh, clients in the group when I'm closing 50% of this position, moving the stop loss to empty price, etc. So everyone is singing off the same hymn sheet. Okay, now we're going to look at the markets here. I just need to plug this in. A second. Okay. And we're going to head over to Trading View. So, if you haven't yet followed me on Trading View, Make sure you are there. We're starting to build a nice wee following. Uh, the FX Ace, you'll see my smiley face there with the thumbs up to hit the follow button. So, first trade that triggered this week is the. Just get the charts up. Okay. 
it's a euro USD. Now I'm going to show, share with you how there are two ways to trade this because some of you watching this are part of the service, and <clears throat> we're going to show you the second way to use these setups. So now the way I like to analyze the markets is I'm looking at the higher time frames. The reason being, the monthly, I'm looking at the monthly charts, I'm looking for support and resistance, uh, supply and demand, just areas where there's been selling or buying before. I'm kind of looking for these areas on the chart and that's where I'm looking to place my pending orders for the week ahead. The reason being, my trades are weekly swing positions. They last anywhere from one maximum four trading days. Most trades trigger a Tuesday or a Wednesday and then again we've closed them on a Friday. So the trades are only gonna be lasting uh, several trading days. And when you find these kind of support and resistance levels at the higher time frame charts, uh, normally when you get, a, you'll get a reaction at these levels and they do uh, hold significant and are able to allow us to get in, in and out of the markets pretty quickly. So first one that triggered was Euro USD, or sorry, Euro Australian dollar. Now, we're looking at last week here. Could use the replay tool, but the thing, this was rallying all week. What I was looking at last week was this resistance area here. It did break out of it, but this is where what I was looking at last week when I was analyzing the markets last uh, Saturday and Sunday. That's my... So last Saturday and Sunday, this is the first area that I was looking at, okay, to sell this currency pair. Now, what I do next is I'll zoom into the weekly chart and just I want to start seeing what's happening on the weekly charts. We do have a weekly selling zone here, All right? The reason why this is a selling zone is we've had this leg down here. Again, like I said at the start of the video, or start of this, when we started looking at the charts, I'm looking for areas where there's been selling, buying or selling before. And, and especially on the bigger time frame charts, as that's where the large players like to hang out, and that's where you're easily able to notice and we've had this down move, then we had the pause, swing high, and then a new swing low in the trend. So this is the area, the origin of the move that caused this new swing low. So there's been selling pressure here before, and there's also been selling here before at this resistance, also again here. So again, I was looking for a short term, again, a short term to long term selling opportunity at this resistance. What I do then is then I look start zooming down into the lower time frames and kind of analyze what is actually happening. Okay, my entry for this was 169.500. Although we did close above that this week. And So what I was look, expecting to happen this week, again, what I wanted to see, before, started. Uh, it's a lot easier to see on the four chart what I was kind of looking at here. So as we've approached this resistance, you can see price starts to kind of hang around it, starting to move in a sideways uh, movement. So I did, ha I did have this area marked up here, uh, this selling area. So what I wanted to do was see, what I wanted to see was price pop above last week's high and go kind of between here and here. Sometimes <clears throat> I don't want to sell right inside the zone. I just want to see, see what happens above the previous week's high, which is why I was selling at 169.500. And again, this was a pending order. And as price hit 165, 169.500 is a nice round number two, the 500 mark. So 
it's just above the previous week's high. What we can see here in price action is every time price pops a new high, we get a sell-off. So this is what I was kind of expecting to happen. We popped a new high, we got a sell-off. Right. <clears throat> sell-off at 169.500, and then we got a drop nearly 100 pips. We did post in the group. I posted in the group because I think this happened on Wednesday. We actually were able to get the profit on it. But this triggered, I think, late uh, US session on Tuesday. And it dropped at 100 pips, nearly 100 pips pretty quickly. We got 80 pips on this thanks to the break even. So this is one of the reasons why break even is so uh, such a powerful tool when we are using these weekly swing positions. Again, we got triggered and then dropped off pretty quickly. We we're able to close out 50% of the position and move our stop loss to the entry price. So even if this does go, even if this did go back up as it did, it was a risk The 50% of the position was closed with already bank profit, did go back up, but it stopped out at entry price. So it was basically a free uh, trade. Now we did move up. Now the reasons why it moved up again, again, likely just targeting inside this uh, weekly selling area that we seen before. Now there is another way we can uh, trade these setups, and that is <clears throat> using the TRFX King indicator. And what you'll be basically do is you'll set your alert at the entry price on the sheet, and then you'll wait for a four-hour signal. The four-hour signal didn't happen to. Uh, Friday, and again, you would have missed, if, if you were waiting on this, you would have missed out on uh, the, the break even, the 80 pips that triggered, and you got the break even. So sometimes it can work in our favor, sometimes it can't, but that's another way to uh, trade the trades. So that is the reasons behind the Euro Aussie. Again, I think this next week, this will be likely another trade idea for me next week. Again, it'll probably target, pop a new high from the entry price and look for a huge sell-off because it is looking like it's getting ready to sell off very, very soon. We will see. The next one is another one that triggered and it is a Euro Kiwi. Again, this pair was on fire last week. And <clears throat> similar story to the Euro Aussie. What I'm looking at is areas where there's been selling before, swing high, swing lows, uh, support and resistance on the higher time frame charts. Um, as you can see, this is an area here last week that I was kind of looking at. We've had two selling, but a selling pressure here before twice. We also had another area here, kind of the top of this move, and then we have this huge. Uh, supply slash sell zone here. Uh, this is from 2020 where we had that huge spike up to the upside and we also have some highs up here. A lot of times you will see market, markets do target these swing highs. They are act as a resistance. So last week, although we did rally this week, this is kind of the area that I was looking at here. Again, we'll zoom into the lower time frames. We'll look at the weekly charts and see we've had a selling was sold here before, was sold here before. I was looking to see if this would happen again. Zoom into the daily chart. We can see as prices come up to this area, I can already see that it is starting to slow down, starting to kind of create this rounded top pattern. But we can notice it's starting to slow down basically because of the wicks on the candles. It rallies and drops, rallies and drops. So there is a bit of indecision at a key area on the higher time frame charts. We could get a continuation rally up here to this next level at 185 and then get the sell off. Last week, I think this was, so this is where we're starting this, starting this week. If we look at the four hour chart, picture is a little bit clearer. Uh, we started the move, we're starting to move sideways. It's broke above this resistance and it started to form a bit of support above this resistance. So this is kind of indicating we might be moving up to the next uh, 
side. So where's Monday? So this is the kind of the open. This was a quick trade on Monday. So what I, again? What I was doing? I was looking to sell at this area. I wanted to see price pop above last week's high, which it did. At one eighty three three hundred was the set was the entry price, and then get the sell off. Okay, it sold off. Sold off pretty quickly on Monday and got us a hundred pips. Hit the break even pretty. Pretty pretty uh, quickly, it did rally up again. Came back up to the entry price, but we'd already closed fifty percent of the position, and it was a kind of free trade again. So basically, again another simple setup. This resistance area, right, this area here. Weekly charts has sold at this area before. So we did get the rally up last week. We did get the close above it last week. Uh, what I wanted to do was wait for price to pop a new high and have me pending an order above that high for the sell-off. Because we can see every time it pops up and takes out a previous high, we get the sell-off. Okay, so it's a high probability that we'll get a sell-off again after it pops a new high. Got the sideways movement all week. It looks like it's forming support. Could be forming support at this uh, resistance that it broke out of. To target the higher time frames, uh, this will be possibly a trade idea for next week. Target the higher levels, sorry, up towards 185. We will see what happens in the future. So that is the reason behind that uh, setup. The next one is a Euro Swiss Franc. And we'll just delete all these. I'll try and go through these as quickly as possible. Again, I like to be more descriptive in what I'm doing, so it does sometimes take a little bit uh, longer. Uh, I know people don't like to sit in one place for too often nowadays, but one of the key skills of trading is patience. So sitting down, watching this, watching me go through the setups, and will help you gain a little bit of uh, patience. So, <clears throat> monthly chart. What we're looking at here. Again, okay, we're moving down, but we're coming down towards these areas here. We've got this low here. And then I was looking down towards last month's low also. Which could provide a bounce area. Swimming into the weekly charts. What you'll notice here. Now this is a huge buying zone, but we have this start of this buying level here. <clears throat> right, reason being, this is the start of this huge leg up. It actually was able to take out these swing highs here. This move was able to pop all the way up and take out these swing highs. So it is, there was a lot of buying from this level. So likely, I've already got one bounce here before. If we zoom into the daily charts. <clears throat> similar story markets moving down what I wanted to do was target this area back down here 95 500 wait for the market to drop down to this area here and then get the <clears throat> the trigger which it did late last I think it was Thursday it triggered on and then it's finished Friday up 40 pips so it was nice a nice trade that we closed it last night Again, reasons behind that, looking to come down towards last month's low, should act as some nice support, which it has here, here, and then again here. So, very, very basic trade. Uh, next one was one that got stopped out. Two weeks in a row I've got stopped out on this. It was a trading idea that I posted uh, in the free Telegram group, if this is where you're watching this from. It is on the British Pound uh, Kiwi. Now, I was expecting some early selling last week. Uh, sorry, last week on Monday. We did get a drop 
on Monday around 50 pips and then it's just rallied the whole week so this is one to look out for because it is looking like it a, we are going to get a sell-off pretty soon we could be targeting up towards the 117500 level that I talked about in last week's video if you want to watch that you can it'll be either left or right of me here or it'll be on the YouTube channel so again we're going to head over to the the monthly charts first <clears throat> We've got this swing high mark looks to be targeting. We've got this swing high resistance here. And then we had this close here. Sometimes I like the closes too from this candle. And then we had the huge sell off. <clears throat> Zooming into the weekly charts. Again, I could, could argue that could see a point where there was no reason for selling this at the open last week. But if I zoom into the lower time frames, I might, could we argue we could have sold this up around 13,500 or higher. But looking at last week, when I was looking at the markets, analyzing what was happening. So let's have a look at the four hour charts. It still is very overextended, to be honest. As I explained in the video, I wanted to basically catch the quick retracement, maybe down to 210 and analyze the market at that level. If this didn't occur. What actually happened was it dropped a little bit on Monday. We were we entered this at 2, 2.12.20. Again, I was just looking to enter this when the market opened, as I explained in the video, hopefully to catch a couple of hundred pips down towards 210 didn't work out we had the stop loss at 130 pips and the markets just continued to rally all the way up we could be targeting this 217 area up here which I think we may well be looking at the, the 12 hour chart this is very overextended this is why I kind of like trading for you you can create your own uh, early candles this is very overextended this is very very bullish and we could be seeing this move coming up to here and then a huge sell-off so I wouldn't be buying this here I would kind of let it run its course because there is only a couple of hundred pips up towards this level left and look for we'll be looking for sell signals very very soon if we were using the TRFX in the King indicator last week uh, there was no signals a couple of times I did post in the trading view group that a signal was starting to occur this did not happen as the candle did not close if we look at the four hour chart, it was early, yeah, 213. We did get a sell signal. Uh, again, round about the entry price where I was entered on Monday, we were getting sell signals in the four hour chart. Again, it didn't work out. Just sometimes trades don't work out, sometimes they do. That's why I like trading in a basket of currencies. One might not work out, uh, two others will work out, as you have seen here. So the kind of <clears throat> help out when you do have a losing position so the next one is British pound Australian dollar another break-even trade a okay, break-even being that we close 50% of the position and moved our stop loss to entry price after we had banked 100 pips so monthly charts a huge moves on these I think this nearly actually hit uh, the two dollar mark this week i think we will hit this very the two dollar mark very very soon okay the markets do look like they're going back to prices pre uh 2010 <clears throat> when before we had this decade of low interest rates we're going back to kind of normal interest rates across the world and we can kind of see this in the charts here this is kind of going back to these kind of levels so what I was looking at last week we're looking to sell this at 196 the selling area here <clears throat> got that kind of support there and there was nothing really to look at on the monthly charts that I was looking at last week we have a bit of resistance here 
around this area at the two mark if we look at the weekly charts let's zoom in and it's <clears throat> kind of looking at this area here last week where we've had this swing low pause the new swing low uh, there was selling here before so I was looking to see if there would be selling here again this week looking at the daily charts <clears throat> the under in this was 196 4 hour charts and as we were approaching this zone last week closing Friday uh, it's basically looking to take out again another wait for the pop above last week's high the previous sorry the previous week's high and then sell at 196 and then get the sell off because as you can see every time we pop a new high we get a sell off similar story to the other positions so I'm just placing my entry price uh, my entry above the previous week's high and then looking to uh, capture the uh, capture the pips did move down pretty quickly early last week and we banked our 100 pips on the break even and then moved our stop loss to entry price and closed 50 percent off the position so that's the reason behind that uh, next trade british pound jpy boom 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 Looking at the monthly charts first. This one got stopped out. Out of the two losing trades this week. We had two losing trades, sorry. This one. And the British Pound Kiwi. Sorry, I'm just looking at the charts there. So. First thing I'm looking at here is this area here. <coughs> I think this is from, yeah. So. We've had huge sell monthly selling here before at this level and it's the first test of this area okay look at the selling that happened here before this is likely to start to happen May, li highly likely we'll get a sell off here longer term you will see we're coming into an area where there's been huge selling before so it is a high probability area so that's the first thing that i'm looking at when i'm analyzing this chart last week that area next one is okay we've had this kind of resistance at 180 184 did did hold a few times i know this weekly candle was very bullish and <clears throat> But we're coming up into this monthly area looking at the daily charts what i was lo looking to see wanting to happen last week was pop up take out these highs maybe a lot better on the four hour chart okay pop up take out the previous week's high and kind of get my entry before the monthly zone okay could have I wanted, like I said, this is a high probability setup that we're going to get a big move on this. So I want to get into this kind of early. So I sometimes the market will sell off before the zone. Sometimes it will sell off deep inside the zone. That's exactly what happened this week. What I wanted to see last week happen was pop up above the previous week's highs. Have my entry order at 184.600 just before the monthly zone. And then hopefully to get the sell off that didn't occur if we were just using the trfx indicator yeah, we had a lot of four hour signals again if you are on the the, the premium membership or trading view you can have the six hour eight hour i like kind of eight hour and 12 hour a lot more high probability setups especially especially going with the <coughs> higher time frame areas you can see be just waiting for an 8-hour signal 12-hour 8-hour signal the 8-hour signal happened deep inside the zone here and we would have made 
a couple of hundred pips on this this trade. Okay, so there is an, that is another way to actually use this. Some people like to set and forget. I personally I like to set and forget because I'm just uh, spending five minutes a day uh, analyzing the markets, looking to see if we're at a break even prices are what. But again, you can use Trading View. You can set alerts, and the good thing about Trading View, you can have it on your phone. You can have the alerts set. You can have the alert set at levels. You can have the TRFX indicator set on the eight hour charts to give you a uh, sorry an alert when we have an eight hour signal. So very very powerful Trading View. Something you can't really do on MetaTrader Four without building complex indicators and things like that. There, Trading View has it all built in so very very good so next one is usd jpy this was looking bad all the way up till yesterday after the cpi cpi data in japan we got a huge sell-off okay so <clears throat> monthly charts First thing I'm looking at, the swing high, We're looking at this level here, just like the mark these. And I want to see this area here. The reason I'm looking at this, a little broke up through it last time. We did get a sell off just above it, and so likely to this, for this to happen again. So we had, we had a huge sell-off here before in 1998. This could be another time when there was intervention with the, the yen, I'm not too sure. Uh, and we're approaching this area again. So you could say this is, this zone here is a nice sale zone for the USD Japanese yen longer term inside this area. Okay. This huge selling off, selling sell off here before. And this is the kind of area that I was looking at last week. We look at the weekly charts. <clears throat> and we can see price this week respected that area. The entry price for this this week was 145,600. Again, this is, the re this is kind of the reason behind it. I didn't want to sell bang on this level. It did go all the way up. It did go against us near 80 or 90 pips. Again, our stop losses are 130 pips across all positions. It did go against us a little bit. And then we got the sell-off. So if we look at the 4-hour chart, see, as price it broke above these highs here, market had started to move sideways uh well this is this week <clears throat> yeah so again this is a very very basic setup what i was looking looking to do uh just target above these highs above the previous week's highs and 145 600 it did rally up further if we use the trfx indicator looking at a Bang on the four hour signal last week was bang on this uh, kind of resistance level here. Again, if, you, if we do use the manual uh, setups, set alerts, can be a lot more high probability trades. Again, <clears throat> and just setting pending orders, you want to get triggered, but you don't want to, you want to, you have to kind of plan where the best area is to be getting triggered. Similar, I like to go on above the previous week's highs and as close to the resistance area as possible. So that is the reason behind that setup. The next one is the Aussie Swiss franc. <clears throat> okay, and this setup was 156. 500 just closed the week break even. So sorry, just at the entry price. Uh, we look at the, the monthly charts.
Let's move these drones. So it's very, very. First thing I'm looking at is this area here. Okay, for the swing, for the drop, swing low, rallies up to the swing high, and then this from this swing high we create a new swing low. So this is an area of interest for selling in the future. We have this low here, and that's what I'm kind of looking at on the monthly. What I do then is zoom into the weekly, and looking at this weekly low here. Okay, this weekly low from 2020. It's the first time it's come down here. You can see that we had that, and we had this is from the, the crash at the start of the CV uh, pandemic. We had this crash down, comes back up to close, and then we had this swing low the, the next week, and then this closed at the same level. So, kind of, a, this should act as some support, which is what I was looking at. It's per weekly chart, maybe 10 weeks straight down. Do expect some buying on this very, very soon. Looking at the daily charts, again, basically, I was just targeting that support, weekly support from the swing low in 2020. I wanted to get in before 56,500. Okay. Looking at the four hour charts. <clears throat> Sometimes it will, like I said, we're placing pending orders. You wanna get into the position before the level. Uh, 156,500, it did drop down, hit the support, and then we can see the sideways movement and then the rally up, so do expect, sorry. This will be another, this will be the same, next week I'll probably enter a little bit lower, for hopefully to get a, catch this up, because this is looking very good for a buy, buying setup long term. Next one is, as you can see, most of my, this very, very basic what I'm doing here, very, very basic is just looking at support and resistance, supply and demand, just areas where there's been buying or selling before on the higher time frame charts, zooming in to look at the lower time frames and analyzing price action. Okay, so <clears throat> monthly charts. Kind of no reference for this. I think it's all time lows again just take out the again in different brokers this may be let's have a look let's have a look at wanda this low might be different this is from 2020 so be very very telling to see where this uh ends up by the end of this month Okay, whether we close back up above 53. So the monthly charts, this is all I can really look at in the monthly charts because there's no other reference. And then zoom into the weekly. Again, what was the entry in this? 52.4. <clears throat> uh, again, just similar story. Just, I entered this on Monday morning. Okay, 52.4. Just basically under this resistance, I'm expecting a rally up. And that's it. Did go against, this kind of hung around the same price area all week. Hasn't really moved yet. It will be another trade that I'll enter last week. So nothing really to say about that setup. Last but not least is a Swiss franc Japanese yen. <clears throat> Huge sell off on this on Friday. It's very, very overextended. It is a trade idea I posted on Trading Trading View the other week. Has rallied a little bit more than expected. <clears throat> there is no reference points on this, to be honest. What we're kind of looking at here, all we can really target, all we can really draw on this is on the monthly charts is buying areas. And I, I will like, will highly likely see the market move down towards this area. 
let's take this previous monthly high because <clears throat> it is very overextended across all the higher time frames especially if you look at a monthly chart uh, maybe a little bit higher but this should should have would have could have these uh, yen pairs have been pretty moves and that have been pretty epic this past two years but I do see this changing very very soon as CPI, CPI data coming out of Japan is indicating that especially yesterday it was higher than expected that inflation is starting to become a bit of a problem there and this may trigger uh, the BOJ to start increasing interest rates or widening the yield curve so we'll see what happens next month we do have the C core cbi data cpi data this week this friday so it's very very telling to have see what happens with the yen pairs over the next few weeks especially if the inflation data starts to pick up and starts becoming higher than expected because the boj has said that <clears throat> they expect inflation to start to go down from next month and this month is starting to go above expectations so going to be very very interesting to see what actually happens on it so what we're looking at here <clears throat> every time the market pops up and creates a new high takes out a previous high right here sells off takes out a previous high we have a sell off <clears throat> you can see it starts to get these swing highs start to get shorter uh, here here I know this one was very very uh, big this is from that impulse move in June um, it starts to get very every time it pops a new high we get a sell-off pops a new high last week and we get a sell-off this is what I was kind of expecting to happen this week looking at the, the daily charts okay our entry on this was 165.5 <clears throat> closed the week up nearly 100 pips they go against us a little bit. <clears throat> again, what I was expecting, looking for the entry price, is again just going uh, popping above last the previous week's high, and then pending order, and then selling. You can see that it just I think the highest high it went up this week was yeah one sixty six. So it did go against us. Uh, nearly 60 pips 60 or 70 pips and then sold off on friday looking at the trfx king indicator you can see that we did get a few sales signals around kind of around up where i was looking to enter anyway Eight our signal on tuesday and the huge sell off on friday so i i think this pair will this is gonna sell off pretty heavily uh, next we maybe get a little bit of a retracement early next week Possibly, possibly. Market may move up here, back up towards 165, above 165 next week, and then uh, selling off. We will see. Or it could dust. <laughs> Monday morning, this could dust open up, and then boom, huge sell off. Let's see. So. <clears throat> That is it, my friend. So that's a quick review. We did bank around 140 pips last week across all those uh, trading setups. It could have been a lot worse with uh, some of them trades if we didn't have the break even uh, rule that some of them trades would have got stopped out. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you've watched it to the, to the end and <clears throat> it has helped your trading. Like, like I said, I don't really plan these videos. I just open up the the recorder and start and start speaking just kind of make it as natural as possible don't have a script or anything so excuse my uh planning for these videos but i think this is kind of the more authentic way to uh do them rather than just having sitting down having something scripted out just uh basically open up the charts sharing with you my thought process when i'm looking uh, trading ideas so if you want to get if you're not already in the service you want to get access to my list of trading setups each and every sunday 
and <clears throat> access to the weekly live streams uh, that which we go through the trade breakdowns on a Sunday. Uh, simply there will be a link in the description of this video and simply you can sign up if you want. If not, watch and rewatch this video, like and subscribe and let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic weekend and I shall see you on the next video well over at Pips and Gains.